In today's news, the United Kingdom slaps a hefty $5,000 pounds fine on any person traveling abroad during the pandemic. BVI Ports Authority announces reopening of the Tortola Cruise Pier starts stimulation exercises. The BVI charter receives a 50% reduction in licensing fees and Khalid named the new VI Festival and Chairs Fairs Chairman, sorry, new Vice Chairman as well. And we also see a new PR being appointed. All that and so much more in today's edition of 284 News. Welcome, everybody. It's Tuesday, March 23rd, 2020. We're coming to you live and direct from Tortola in the beautiful British Virgin Islands. I'm Ron Grant. And my name is Javon Wilson. Another opportunity to deliver your local, regional, as well as international content right here on 284 News. Now, topping our summary, we see the Rotown Jetty International Ferry uh, Passenger actually going forward with their simulation exercises. Now, the BVI Ports Authority engaged in an interagency simulation exercise just yesterday comprising of the Immigration Department, HM Customs, Health Authorities, BVI Tourist Board, and ferry operators. Now, viewers, this was a part of the preparation for the reopening of the Rotown Seaport to international ferry passengers traffic come April 15, 2021. Of course, this is a kind reminder to Indeed. our tourists that we are getting ready for you. We also see on the international scene U.S. experts saying that there are new concerns highlighting uh, that within the AstraZeneca vaccines uh, trials, they may have used outdated data. Wow. Um, and uh, that's causing a big scare on the international scene as well as a hefty £5,000 fine in the United Kingdom for any UK resident who decides to travel overseas during the pandemic. I know persons are calling this quite a draconian move, but we do Indeed. see the government uh, trying their best to lower the numbers in the United Kingdom. All right, viewers, beginning on the local scene here in the British Virgin Islands, as we mentioned, uh, the BVI Ports Authority reopening of the cruise port has been announced with government approval for June 2021 for cruise vessels with fully vaccinated passengers and crew. One of the BVI Ports Authority first expected passengers uh, crewed Cruise call, sorry, to the territory will be Celebrity Millennial of Royal Caribbean Group's Celebrity Cruises starting June 2021. Uh, home porting out of St. Martin, the regional itinerary includes uh, St. Martin, Tortola, and Barbados. Now, Mrs. Oveline Maynard, Acting Manager Director of the BVI Ports Authority, stated that we are excited, she said, to be a part of this new regional itinerary. And while the cruise experience will be different than it was uh, pre-pandemic, we are committed to providing our cruise partners and their guests with a safe and enjoyable cruise stop. Now, the BVI Ports Authority and the Cyril B. Romney Tortola Pier Park teams will be working diligently with the Ministry of Health and Social Development and the BVI Tourist Board, local cruise agents, and of course the cruise line uh, desiring to call uh, to ensure a healthy return to the cruising here in the territory of the Virgin Islands. Now, Mr. Vance Lewis, CEO at the Cyril B. Romney Tortola Pier Park, commented and said, the health and safety of the cruise guests, crew, and our local community is our top priority, and we will be working very closely with all partners to ensure for a safe 
resumption of this sector. Shipboarding requirements includes for passengers over 18 years of age to be fully vaccinated along with 100% vaccination of the crew. Additionally, uh, testing, pre-screening and embarkation measures are in place along with other onboard mitigation measures to prevent COVID-19 outbreaks. Now, operations at the cruise pair for passengers calls were halted more than 12 months ago, as we all know, due to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Jovan, once news uh, hit, this, of course, brought uh, some excitement to many persons, especially those working uh, within the tourism industry. And though it is um, not until June, I think it definitely gives persons time uh, to prepare, which we've been speaking about, but definitely uh, shed some light and some excitement uh, that we are moving uh, back into some level of normalcy. I agree, and I think we're one of the first in the Caribbean to do so. I think that's yes. a great plus for the BVI, considering the competition as well we've been seeing with the U.S. VI, that they remain open. Um, and we do know as well, we, we heard about this a long time ago, vaccine passports. In order to get on a cruise ship, you must be vaccinated. And we're seeing it firsthand. Absolutely. So very much looking forward to that in June. And of course, the reopening of seaports on April 15th in general. Now, more news as it relates to uh, the sea. The Commissioner of Customs, Mr. Wade N. Smith, is notifying all charter boats owners, charter companies, and charter management companies of a 50%, that is 5-0, reduction of license and fees outlined in the Commercial Recreational Vessel License and Act 1992. Now, in accordance with Section 4 of the Act, Recreational Commercial Vessel License and Fees are due on November 1st of each year. As such, fees were to be paid by November 1st of 2020. However, given the circumstances created by the COVID-19 pandemic, which prevented the marine industry from operating at full capacity, license and fees uh, outstanding since November 2020 are now due to be paid at a 50% reduction by April 15th of 2021. Thereafter, fines and penalties may apply in accordance to Section 11 of the Act for Noncompliance. Now, Premier and Minister of Finance, Honorable Andrew A. Foy, affirmed that this reduction in licensing fees is part of the government's commitment to alleviating the impacts of COVID-19 on the public in the form of stimulus packages. The Premier said, and I quote, In the form of a stimulus to the marine industry, I am pleased to announce that your government has extended a reduction of fees for the 2020 to 2021 season for the licensing year November 1st, 2020 to October 1st, 31st, sorry, 2021. This is a stimulus for our marine industry, end of quote. Now, all charter companies and charter boat on owners are encouraged to contact the Customs Department at the number 468-6852. Uh, Again, that number is 468-6852 and submit all outstanding fees. Again, by the date April 15, 2021. Her Majesty's Customs is committed to serving the government and the public with professionalism, fairness, and integrity by providing quality service, maximizing the collection of revenue, protecting our territorial borders and facilitating legitimate trade efficiency effectively and economically in order to safeguard the well-being and security of the territory. Ron, a much-needed uh, reduction. Absolutely. And to a much-needed industry. Absolutely. Just yesterday, we spoke to uh, Mr. Andrew, Andrew Ball, Ball yeah. who's the chairman, and um, we, we understood the impact and, and really had a, a first-hand look at uh, some of the concerns on the ground as we remain closed the year after, I think above all else, we'll know, we're known as the sailing capital of not just the Caribbean, of, of the but world. of the world. And to see our seaports remain closed, uh, it was really devastating to a lot of our local captains. So I'm very happy to see this reduction being extended. Now, viewers, still ahead, Khalid Fret named new VI Festival and Chair Fairs chairman. Uh, we also see a new vice chairman in PR being appointed and the U.S. reports are now showing that AstraZeneca may have faltered by using outdated info during their trials, of course, leading to brand new concerns. Plus, the U.S. is not using the vaccines. They're actually shipping them out to Mexico and Canada. So we have all the details when 284 News returns. The wind up. What in the hell? I'm freaking out. Jeff is about to speak. It's always a pleasure coming to you live and direct from the... What's poppin' was really good? Davis has won it for the Lakers!
Is business slow? Cash flow down? Hosting an upcoming event? We can help. Advertise with 284 Media and take your business or event to the next level by enhancing your present marketing and messaging strategies. Allow our team of experts to create a personalized ad that sets your business apart from all the rest. This could be your business or event. So, what are you waiting for? Contact our marketing team at 284 Media at cctbvi.com. Advertising with us works. Viewers, thanks for sticking with us. You're watching To It For News. Now continuing on on the local scene here in Tortola, at a recent cabinet meeting, chaired by His Excellency Governor John J. Ranking, cabinet decided on the appointment of the following members to the Virgin Islands Festival and Fairs Committee 2021, with effect from 1st January 2021. They are Mr. Khalid Frett as chairman to replace previous chairman, Mr. Carnell Klein, who vacated the post on March 26th of 20. Uh, 20. Now, Mrs. Violet De Castro as Vice President until March 26, 2022. Uh, Miss April Glasgow as Public Relations Officer from March 1st, 2021 to December uh, 31st, 2023. Committee members are Stuart Donovan, Otley Hodge, and Miss Herella George, Representative for Anagata, with effect from January 1st, 2021 to December 31st, 2023. Ms. Delia John Baptiste, Ms. Marietta Headley, and Mrs. Luce Hodge Smith and Mr. Dion Kendall have also been appointed as members with effect from March 1st, 2021 for a period of three years. Now, Cabinet revoked the appointment of Mr. Nicholas Bailey as treasurer with effect February 28, 2021, and decided that Ms. Eshel Hodge be appointed as treasurer with effect from March 1st, 2021 for a period of three years. Now, with the present pandemic, as we all know, still affecting the territory of the Virgin Islands, uh, the minister responsible has not made any announcement regarding emancipation celebrations for 2021. More details to come as we follow. Jovan, we know this, uh, believe it or not, um, residents are still anticipating um, and still wondering whether or not we're going to have some form of an emancipation uh, celebration, and we will continue to wait on further announcement. Well, we, we did see over in the USVI, the governor saying, you know, if you get vaccinated, you just might be able to have and a And a lot of festival. other regional uh, leaders yes. have been saying that same thing. Yes. yes, so we might hear that similar tune here. But I know government is really pushing for us in order to get vaccinated, to return some, to some of these um, of normal course. activities. And when you think about the Emancipation Festival, it's really one of those activities that the entire territory looks forward Absolutely. to. And I think after this pandemic... It's the least that we could do. Okay, government? All right. The viewers moving right along. We see U.S. officials saying early Tuesday, that is yesterday, sorry, today, sorry, that they were made aware that AstraZeneca may have provided outdated data in its disclosure of trial results for its COVID-19 vaccines. Now, in a brief statement, the National Institute for Allergy and Infectious Diseases, NIAG, said that the outdated information could have provided a, quote, incomplete view of the efficacy data, end of quote. Now, AstraZeneca, as early as today, had not responded to the statement. However, the statement comes on the heels of AstraZeneca's release of data from a large-scale U.S. trial, which found its COVID-19 vaccine to be 79% effective against the disease. The data represented a boost for the firm, which had experienced setbacks in Europe following reports of unusual blood clotting, raising concerns about the vaccine's safety. Now, European regulators have since said that the vaccine is safe. Now, the NIAID said that the independent monitoring uh, board working with AstraZeneca on its COVID-19 trials raised concerns about the company's data disclosure and urged AstraZeneca to work with it as it asserted that the most accurate and up-to-date information is provided to the public. Now, AstraZeneca just yesterday announced its intention to submit its COVID-19 vaccine to the Food and Drug Administration for emergency use in the United States and expected the vaccine to be available in the country by May if it is approved. Now, just a few days ago, viewers, the U.S. Uh, released uh, information that they are now set to send just about 4 million doses of the AstraZeneca coronavirus vaccine to its neighbors. That is, of course, Canada and Mexico. Now, the White House, uh, this was released by the White House, of course. Canada and Mexico have approved the AstraZeneca jab, but the U.S. has not to date. However, the U.S. has a stockpile of the vaccine. 
Now, announcing the plan to distribute doses on Thursday, White House spokeswoman Ms. Jan Paxke said that 2.5 million of the 7 million jabs will go to Mexico and 1.5 million will be given to Canada. Under the agreement, the countries must return any excess doses to the U.S. Now, leaders from Mexico and Canada had notched the Biden White House uh, administration repeatedly for assistance. In one case, Mexican officials pressed the Biden team on the issue during a conversation about border security. Now, viewers, major European nations suspended the use of AstraZeneca uh, over reports of blood clots in recipients. Now, AstraZeneca uh, have since said that they have only received 37 reports of blood clots out of 17 million people vaccinated in the 27 country European Union and Britain. The drug maker is now saying that there is not sufficient evidence to support the fact that the vaccine may carry an increased risk of clots. Interesting. Iran, I think every day we are discovering something new as it relates to these vaccines. And a lot of attention, uh, really a microscope, has been placed over the AstraZeneca Correct. brand. Uh, and I think for many reasons, we do know it is, of all the three that were approved internationally, AstraZeneca is the cheapest brand. It is the brand that is uh, stored more conveniently yes. as opposed to the other brands. Um, and it's the most accessible brands. It is also the brand being utilized by COVAX, which is distributing uh, vaccines to countries who cannot afford it. And also the brand that is being used here in the BVI. Correct. So I do think it's very important that we continue to really educate ourselves, especially for persons who would have taken and even those who may be considering taking the vaccine as we continue to roll out uh, the vaccination plan here. Well, Jovan, you're absolutely right in regards to the cost of AstraZeneca. One of the things that I think is important for us uh, as a territory is to make sure uh, that both the good and the not so good or the negative aspects of the vaccines are uh, projected uh, too oftentimes when it comes to situations like this because uh, countries are so willing and uh, so wanting persons to be administered the vaccine. Uh, we tend to push the more positive, and I yes. think it's important uh, uh, as a collective and a unified union that we continue to present both sides of yes. the story and have the residents, uh, not the only decision. of the BVI, but mm -hmm. of the region, make their own decision. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Still ahead, viewers, a Boulder, Colorado shooting, 10 dead in a shooting at a grocery store. This is less than a week after the spot killings in Atlanta, believe it or not, in the UK to slap a 5,000 pounds fine on persons who travel abroad. All this and so much more. You're watching 284 News. So you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question, it will read his mind. There's the answer code. You're the man! I've been looking for this for weeks. Father Jesus, that learning you along like church service. Hmm. Alright, let me enjoy the rest of it then. Next customer in line, please. Wait, hold on a second. Yes, Sonny Boy, come yes, Sonny. Good morning. Good morning, Sonny Boy. You must have cut fun tapping. It's okay, it's okay, I'll take care of it. What? No, no man, you can tell me. How may I assist you? Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> you want a top of power? Eh? You want a top of power? Eh? Join the prepaid party with CCT and enjoy more affordable data plans, more top-up promotions, more savings with hero bundles, and more value for your money each and every Tuesday with Top Up Turn Up Tuesday. Visit a CCT store today or anywhere CCT Top Up is sold and top up your phone. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, you want top up or what? Eh? Viewers, welcome back to 284 News. Now, as we pan across to the international scene, Lots going on. Just imagine, Ron, being fined for yes. going on vacation abroad uh, during the pandemic. Well, viewers, nothing should surprise us anymore as it relates to this pandemic, as the United Kingdom is now actually planning to fine people in England 5,000 pounds or over 6,900 U.S. if they were to try and travel abroad 
without good reason. Now, the penalty is a part of new legislation that will be voted on by the MPs on Thursday and is likely to come to force next week. Now, the new coronavirus laws suggest that anyone who leaves England for a destination outside of the UK without a reasonable excuse could face the penalty. Anyone traveling abroad has to fill a declaration to travel form, uh, stating a valid reason to leave the country, said a report in BBC. Now, the valid reasons include education, work or child care. Now, travelers to and from the common travel area of the Channel Islands, the Isle of Man, as well as the Republic of Ireland, need not worry about the fine. However, if the aforementioned places are not the final destination, they would be penalized as the rest. Now, viewers, foreign holidays are currently not allowed on under the stay-at-home uh, rule that has been mandated in the U.S. That's actually supposed to end on Monday. But the ban on leaving the U.K. will become a specific law, complete with a fine. Resumption of foreign travel is not likely to happen anytime soon to another surge um, in coronavirus cases, along with the slow pace of the vaccination. Now, Health Secretary Mr. Matt Hancock said that the traveling restrictions were necessary to curb the importation of a large number of cases as well as new arrivals. Junior Health Minister James Bethel said that the UK might put all their European neighbors in the red list of countries. The red list was introduced as part of the travel restriction to stop COVID-19 variants from entering the country. The list is regularly reviewed. However, British nationals and the people who are normally resident in the United Kingdom will be allowed back into the country, but they must quarantine in a hotel once they reach the country. Now, Ron, I think when we think about this pandemic, I think everyone is really looking around and, and, and wondering, like, what is the world coming to? And what's next? Absolutely. Um, I, I think being confined is one thing, but being confined by force yeah. um, to a specific space. Um, I know persons are saying, you know, this is government's way of really curving, curving those in. numbers and flattening the curve. But a lot of persons are of the opinion that this is a draconian measure. And certainly when we think about travel, especially it has already taken a, a hard backlash. Uh, when we think about uh, the numbers, especially recently, travel has been on the decline. So I definitely know that this will continue to hamper international travel. Well, for many persons, and I agree, it could be uh, deemed as a bit too severe. Um, different uh, countries have quarantine uh, methods. So if a person is willing to uh, you know, deal with whatever measures a territory uh, has put in place in order uh, to travel, then that is upon them. But when we look at the trajectory and the change, and just like you said, in now making this uh, mandatory and um, ensuing yeah. fines, this is not wearing a mask now. Uh, this is basically telling you that if you travel, you will be subject to fines. I think it really speaks to the dire situation mm -hmm. um, and the uh, level of seriousness as well as um, just how uh, really blatantly... Uh, worried countries are and they're, they're just doing everything possible to you know, anything yeah, possible uh, this is about this it. is another example unfortunately mm -hmm. and and we're lucky in the caribbean that our numbers have remained low and uh, you know the government was also circulating this story i'm hoping you're not getting any ideas but hopefully the caribbean does not have to follow suit mm -hmm. because again the numbers are high in the united states and in the united kingdom because much wasn't done initially correct and thankfully in the caribbean and especially here in the bvi those initial steps were taken. Uh, to Most definitely. Uh, now continuing on the international scene, international media have reports of very daunting news and confirming that 10 people, including a police officer, were killed Monday after a gunman opened fire in a grocery store in Boulder, uh, Colorado, shattering the calm of another U.S. community. Now a sus suspect is in custody, uh, Boulder Police Chief uh, Maris Herald said, uh, but authorities uh, did not share any information on his identity, the type of weapon use, or any possible motive. Uh, they said in an official comment, we will work around the clock to get this accomplished, officials said, adding that such a complex investigation will take at least five days to complete. Now, the fatal shooting at the King Scoopers store uh, comes less than a week after uh, shooting attacks of three spas in Atlanta area left eight people dead. Uh, while Boulder police investigate Monday's massacre, witnesses shared their horrifying experiences with the terror and panic inside the store. Stephen McCaw said his son-in-law and two granddaughters were there with a gunman attacked. When the gunman attacked, his son-in-law, Paul, 
was the third in line for a COVID-19 vaccine, and his seventh and eight-year-old granddaughters were on the phone with their grandmother. On the other end of the phone, their grandmother heard at least eight shots ring out. Now, the woman at the front of the line was shot. Uh, McCaw told reporters, Paul grabbed the girls and uh, hurried them upstairs to take cover in a coat closet above the pharmacy. He said the girls said they were afraid because the coats weren't long enough to hide their feet. The intensity, he said, the awfulness is going to last for the rest of their lives. Ryan Borowski said he was shopping at the store when he heard the first shot and by the third one, everyone was running. He said the, he couldn't believe it happened in his own town. Boulder, he said, feels like a bubble and that bubble has burst. Borowski said, this feels like the safest spot in America and I just nearly got killed for getting a soda and a bag of chips. He continued by saying it doesn't feel like there's anywhere safe anymore. Now the slain officer, 51-year-old Eric Talley, was one of the first to respond to the scene. Talley had joined the Boulder Police Force in 2010. He uh, was said to be, on all accounts, one of the outstanding officers of the Boulder Police Department and his life was cut far too short, Boulder County District Attorney Michael Dari said. Now, officials did not disclose the identity of any of the other victims, saying they needed to first notify family members, of course. Now, the Boulder Police tweeted about 2.49 p.m. yesterday on Monday that there was an active shooter at the King Scoopers on Table Mesa. Avoid the area, they said. In scanner traffic, officers uh, radioed and they were in the gunfire. They continued to report that they were being fired at with multiple rounds through at least 3, uh, 3 o'clock um, to 2 p.m. That's how long uh, the shootout lasted. In local time, ambulances and multiple law enforcement agencies arrived at the store, which is part of a large shopping center with a two-story strip mall next to it. Uh, Jovan, we see a continued, uh, very unfortunate uh, act of violence continuing to plague the United States. Um, unfortunately, as unfortunate as this story is, uh, we here in the Caribbean who experience acts of violence, uh, those small territories, it is not a case where we are any different. Violence happens all over the world. And we see where in this case, of course, gun laws uh, that have been talked about for many years come into play. Americans are continuing to lose their lives just by going to the grocery store, just by trying to get vaccines, uh, and they're losing their lives in numbers. Listen, uh, I think as the days go, go by and, you know, as we consider all that's already happening with this pandemic, it's just daunting to really, you know, tune in and mm -hmm. recognize what's happening on the international stage, but you, you brought it home, Ron. You know, it's here, it's in the Caribbean as well. And this is what happens, unfortunately, when we don't have the requisite laws and legislations in place to curb uh, mm -hmm. crime. One of the things persons have been calling for in the United States is legislation to um, essentially control the amount of guns that we have on the streets and legal owners as well. Um, just the other day, during the, well, just a few months ago, we saw uh, a man literally come out of his home and shoot to death yeah. two persons, his neighbors, over some snow, like clearing the yeah. pathway. So it's just ridiculous. I think people are under pressure. And, and when we examine some of these cases, uh, some persons may say, you know, the person may have had a mental disability or fall in that type of way. But... Just to see this happening in the midst of already, everything that's already happening, it's, it's just, it's really unfortunate. Well, you raise a very good point that persons all over the world are under pressure. But what this raises continuously is racism, uh, because we see within the acts of uh, Atlanta and also in San Francisco, uh, the Asians were attacked, uh, the Asian yes. community. So one minute it's the blacks, one minute it's the Asians mm -hmm. uh, or the Hispanics or different persons of different uh, nationalities. Right. So it continuously seems like it's attacked uh, on various occasions at different uh, nationalities, which brings us to the point that we're still uh, dealing with mm -hmm. a significant problem as it pertains to racism on all levels throughout the United States. So um, much to uh, be disappointed about, to be sad. These are families that continue to grieve um, while dealing with the pandemic. Uh, we'll continue viewers to keep you posted on these stories. Of course, and we want to remind you uh, for the stories that we couldn't cover today, you can yes. always head on over to our website. That is 284media.com. Lots of articles there to go through, not only on the local, regional, but also as well on the international screens, and especially for you, our valued readers. So be sure to check that out. We're also on Facebook, 
at 284 Media and Instagram and Twitter at 284 BVI. My name is Javon Wilson. And I'm Ron Grant. It's always a pleasure. We'll continue to do our best to give you the latest on local, regional, and of course, international content. We're 284 News, your source for honest and impartial news right here in Tortola in the British Virgin Islands. Have a good rest of the day, guys. A terrific Tuesday. Happy Tuesday to one and all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.